Hey friends, I hope this turns out okay because I'm outside. I have my sunglasses on as you guys can see, but I literally can't see my phone because it's so bright out, it's so beautiful. If you hear water dripping, it's the rain barrel over there catching all the dripping snow. Anyway, I thought that I would update you guys out here because it is so, I can't even tell you guys, like it's so beautiful out right now. It's only like, I don't know, two or three degrees Celsius or something. But this, this spot on the deck catches the heat. So I'm just sitting outside in my house coat. The sun is so warm and it is brightening up my day, literally. So at this point in time at filming this, I haven't attempted to edit the vlog from last week, but I'm thinking I might take the clip because it's a good clip. I was so excited about something. I'm rolling it into this one. And so after this clip, I'm going to insert really quickly that one little clip that I had from last week and then continue on through with the historical fiction-a-thon. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am so excited. Okay, I literally sent an email out for this like, like four days ago, but I'm gonna read this ASAP. My goodness, I'm so excited. So I can't remember exactly what this is about, but it has to do with the Civil War and it has like a magical realism aspect to it. I remember when I read the, um, sorry, I'm out of breath because I was so excited. I remember when I read the synopsis of it, it kind of reminded me of like Ava Lavender. It's a generational story. It touches on the Civil War, but also they're magical in some way. And I saw this on Goodreads. I think I came across it and it sounded so good. And I sent out an email and oh my goodness, I am so flipping excited i cannot believe it i didn't even get a reply i just i know sometimes that they don't but man i am so excited i'm super excited for this i don't even when does it come out oh march 17th it actually comes out for some reason i thought it didn't come out until the fall it comes out in march oh my goodness i'm so excited uh, this is like a great pick me up because today i filmed two videos and both videos I had to refilm because my phone stopped recording partway through. I had deleted a bunch of stuff, but then forgot about the like recently deleted folder, so it didn't actually free up any space. And it wrecked two videos in a row. I was so miffed, but <gasps> this is so cool. And this cover is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so excited. Currently day three of Historical Fiction-a-thon today. It's the Monday. I wanted to quickly update you and let you know that over the weekend, I finished the 13th tale and I loved it. I gave it five stars. I finished it last night. I loved it. There was like a mysterious aspect to it. It was creepy and like kind of eerie. It had this very like haunting, whimsical sort of feel to it. And I just fell in love. I loved the way it was written. I loved the way the story was told. I loved how everything unfolded. Not everything was like, 100% unguessable, but a lot of it I didn't see coming. Like there were certain parts that I had forgotten about until it was like, oh wait, that's what that was. And I just loved it. Plus there was a lot of quotes on here. It touches on grief and I just loved it so much. As of today, I haven't started anything, but I am going to be reading the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. I'm really excited to read this one. I figured I'm going to start out with the shortest book on my TBR and kind of work up from there. I'm really excited to read this one. It does cover three of the prompts, which are um, favorite time period to read about um, wartime and romance. It kind of covers all three of those in bits and pieces. Plus it's written in letters, so I think it's probably going to go by pretty quickly. Anywho, it is absolutely beautiful out today. And this sun is like the most beautiful thing. It was just something that I needed so hard. I've been wishing for sun for like a couple of weeks now. I'm just sitting in my house coat, drinking my bubbly grapefruit water because I love these things. I'm a little bit obsessed. But yeah, I just wanted to welcome you guys to the first installment of the Historical Fiction-a-thon vlogs. This is gonna be week one and then I'll have week two coming up next week. I am so excited about this readathon. I have loved seeing all the posts popping up on Twitter and Instagram. If anyone else is vlogging or has vlogged this, by the time you see this, it would have been in the past. But if anyone else has vlogged it, leave it 
it down below in case for some reason I missed it. I do check the hashtag on YouTube and just the title here and there just to see if anything new goes up, but I'm really, really excited. I think we're gonna have a pretty good turnout. It looks like a lot of people are participating. Anyway, I am just gonna sit outside for a while, hopefully not get a sunburn. I'm gonna read some of my book and enjoy the much needed sunshine and I'll catch up with you guys soon. It is way later in the evening. Well, it's not way later. It's way later than it was earlier. It's like eight o'clock. And I wanted to share with you because I didn't have a chance earlier. I got some book mail today. I actually got The Girl Who Drank the Moon. I picked this up for middle grade March, which I really want to participate in this year. So I'm super excited. I grabbed this one because this is one of Katie's like favorite books. It's on her favorite books of 2019 list, I think. I'd already had my eye on it for a little bit, but then when it ended up on her list, I figured, you know what? I think I should pick it up. So I'm really excited to get to this one soon. And then a quick little check-in for the Guernsey. I, I can't say that name every time, it is so long. I love books that have like letters or diary entries or things like that. I just have, I always have ever since I was a little kid. I remember loving the Dear Canada books when I was a kid. I just devoured them. I remember I would get them on like Christmas morning once in a while and I would read the whole thing in a day and I just loved it or getting them from the school library. I would just sit and read them for like an entire Saturday. I would read these Dear Canada the, um, diary books and I adored them and I feel like there's other books I've read that were mostly diary entries I can't think of what they are off the top of my head but I know that I've always loved them and so the fact that this is all letters I'm really really loving that as well I know the like big sadness that eventually arises in this book so I feel like maybe knowing that is going to make it a little less punchy for me because I have seen the movie but that being said, I love the tone that it's written in. I love our main character. She's so funny. Uh, and I just love reading back and forth of all the different characters in the book. So I'm about 60 pages in. So not quite halfway, but there's just over 200 pages, like 230 pages or something. So I'm going to sit down and snuggle up with this. This is what my Monday night's looking like. Super cozy. Kids are in bed and I'm just going to chill and read for a bit. Thursday. I know, I know it's already Thursday. I'm kind of sorry, but I'm kind of not. We're just gonna vlog through the weekend and see what we get. I wanted to really quickly update you on what I've read this week. So the first book that you guys know I finished is The 13th Tale, and I'm actually gonna count this towards the historical fiction-a-thon because technically it is historical fiction. Um, it's just also got like other elements to it. So anyway, I'm gonna count that one because I did finish half of it during the readathon. And then you guys know I started the Guernsey Literary Potato Peel Pie Society. I have literally 20 pages left in this. I need to finish it tonight, which I will, but I have to take the kids to swimming and then I'm meeting up with my bestie. And so this is gonna have to wait until tonight unless I can squeak out a few pages while they're at swimming. We shall see. I'm gonna take it with me just in case. I am really enjoying it, but honestly, and I know this is like book sacrilege, I think I liked the movie better. And I'm not done yet, so I'll let you know when I'm actually done. But as much as I love letters, I feel like the way that this one is formatted, it almost feels a little bit too much. And then we did this, and then we did this, and then we did this. Like, I knew it was letters. Um, and I heard that the whole thing was letters. And so I was wondering how everything was going to work, considering I've seen the movie. So I don't want to say too much because I don't want to, like, spoil anything. But I have a feeling this is going to be like a solid four star. I think it's going to end really cute. I think it's going to go well. I just, it's not one of my favorite, favorite books of all time, but I am really enjoying it and I literally have 20 pages left, so I need to finish that. But exciting book mail came today. I actually won a giveaway on Instagram, which I have never won a giveaway on Instagram before, but I won one the other day. And so I ordered uh, Things in Jars 
by just kids sorry my kids the schools are on strike and they're downstairs um anywho i ordered things in jars and it came in today and i'm so excited for starters i am like gaga over this cover i think this is just marvelous it's like the most beautiful thing ever but i was really craving something that was kind of quirky and odd after reading the 13th tale and then when I got this I realized it's actually um blurbed by Diane Zetterfield which I don't usually go off blurbs much but considering I just finished one of her books I'm excited and looking forward to this one and I'm hoping that it does all the things that I want it to do but I'm really really excited to get to this and like I said the cover is just gorgeous She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. There must be something bad features. You'll find the beauty goes much deeper. Once you get to meet her, you see a world. Hey guys, I know I'm not looking the cutest right now, but this package I just got in the mail is. So thank you to Penguin Teen. They just sent me a finished copy of The Vanishing Deep, which I am super excited to read. I hope that I absolutely love this. It sounds really neat. It's like a murder mystery, but also a fantasy about this girl who's like bringing her sister back from the dead to figure out, I don't know if it's that the sister killed the parents or just who killed the parents, I don't know. But it sounds really interesting. And this cover is really cool. I am so excited to have this. I am so excited. Today has been like package central. Jared ordered a waffle maker, which I mean, I'm not gonna complain about. He was like, we should get a waffle maker. And I was jokingly just like staring him down. Like, we don't need that. And he's like, you know you want a waffle maker. And I'm like, maybe, maybe I do want a waffle maker. I don't know. <laughs> of course I want a waffle maker. So that's probably gonna happen this weekend but aside from that and all of this which is just like see this my kids are gonna have a heyday with this it's already all over the couch because it was stuck in the book so like i'm not really that worried about making a mess right now anyway i went on like an editing binge this morning i decided to go through i had two or three videos pre-filmed that i needed to edit and i did a couple of those mauser don't don't eat that. So I decided to edit a couple of those because I was in the mood and if I, the mood strikes, then I'm just gonna run with it. Anyway, I need to go finish the last one I was working on. This comes out in March. I can't remember which day. I'll add that to the description box down below, but it sounds really cool and this cover is really neat. So anywho, I'm gonna go finish that video now and hopefully get some reading done. I did finish the Guernsey Literary Potato Peel Pie Society I don't have it right here. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. I finished that last night. End thoughts. I like the way the book ended better, but I liked the way I felt watching the movie better. Does that make sense? Like I wish the, the movie had gone exactly the way that the book did because I loved the ending of the book, but I loved the feeling of experiencing things along with the characters in the movie. So I ended up settling on like a four star. The book was really cute and I did really like it, but I think in the end I would have liked a combo of letters and being part of the story more than only hearing it secondhand. I did start The Tattooist of Auschwitz last night and I have a feeling it's going to absolutely break my heart. I'm only like 15 pages in, but after I finish editing this last video, I'm gonna sit down with my book and try and get a little chunk of that done. And then I wanna read more tonight. It actually is Valentine's Day tonight. It's Friday. I don't know if I said that, it's Friday. It's Valentine's Day. So I'm sure Jared and I will be nibbling some chocolate and drinking some wine but I'm gonna still try and squeak in a little bit of reading before we have like our date night in and watch. Fawn dip! Some sourfish? Why don't you dip it in the fun dip and see what happens? Hey guys, it's Saturday, and where are we going, Rainy? Where are we going? The medieval times. Where are we going, Luffy Princess? I don't know. You don't know? Your don't brother know. just yelled it really loud. I don't know. Can you say medieval times? 
Midi Eagle Times. Midi Eagle Times. <laughs> good, good try. Solid A for effort. Um, so we're heading to Medieval Times in Toronto, I think. And we're going to see jousting and sword fighting, I think. Something like that. Uh, anyway, we're going to go on a family adventure because it's actually family day on Monday. But we're going to celebrate today. So we can have two more days of relaxation and chilling, right Rainy? Yeah! I didn't read anything today, but Jared did help me take a secret Instagram picture, so keep an eye out on Saturday, like real time coming Saturday, because I'll be posting a really cool picture that Jared helped me take, which is part of the reason why I'm wearing so much makeup today, but it turned out really cute, and I like this. it. Um, anywho. We are on our way, so I will catch up with you later. I have read the first 100 pages of The Tattooist of Auschwitz, and I'll catch up with you later. Hey, hey, hey. Hey friends, it's actually Monday today. I didn't update anything yesterday. You guys know, that's fine. We're fine. Um, I did, however, finish a book this weekend. I finished The Tattooist of Auschwitz and I wish that I liked it more than I did, honestly. Sorry, everybody's home because it's a, it's family day here. It's a holiday, so kids are home. Jared's playing guitar. And this is like the last bit of light of the day. Um, we're going to have sushi for dinner. I'm so excited. I was craving sushi so bad last night, so Jared said we could go for dinner tonight. Anyway, The Tattoos of Auschwitz. I feel like this book had so much potential, but the writing itself just got really stale for me. Like there were things that I think if I had read them by a different author, I would have bawled my eyes out. But it was like, I kind of felt, how do I explain it? I felt like I was held at arm's length from the feeling in the book. And I think the only reason, like I settled on like three and a half, four stars. I rounded it up to four on Goodreads. That being said, I feel like I gave it a better rating that I maybe would have because I saw an interview with Lolly before I actually read it and he broke my heart. Like I cried in this 30 second clip I saw of him telling part of his story, but the book itself didn't. And I was expecting a lot of tears and a lot of like heartbreak and well, really sad things happened. It just didn't feel like you were a part of it. Like it, like I said, I just felt like I was held at arm's length. So the Tattoos of Auschwitz was not what I wanted out of it. It was good, but it definitely didn't live up to my expectations of it, which was really sad for me. But I did decide to pick up Lost Roses next. Um, there's obviously, I just about hit myself in the face. There's no dust jacket on it, but the dust jacket has three women on the cover. Um, so that's like the friendship prompt. And I, it's also a wartime novel, but it's World War I. Um, I can't remember if it covers other prompts or not. I think it's just the two. So anyway, I'm about 60 pages in and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, we're following Eliza, which is Caroline's mother from Lilac Girls. Uh, and for some reason I thought she was gonna be younger, but it, make, it makes sense with the time frame of how everything happened. I just wasn't thinking about Caroline being present in this book. Um, but I'm really enjoying it and it's a really interesting because you're following like a following Russian perspectives and then you're following Eliza who's the American but I'm really enjoying it and I'm hoping to get through it pretty quickly this week and if I can I would like to start Longborn after this which is the like classic retelling but I doubt I'll be able to finish both books this week I'm surprised that I finished this one over the weekend but it's such large spacing and fairly large font and just really really fast to get through so I did finish this in like a couple of sitting but yeah, that's what we've got going on this weekend. I am going to close out the vlog today and finish vlogging the rest of the week into next weekend. So this is just gonna be the end of part one of Historical Fiction-a-thon, which went really well. I am so glad that I actually stayed on top of it because technically I finished three books. I didn't start three books, but I read the last half of the 13th tale and then I finished the Grinzy Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, and then I finished the Tattooist of Auschwitz, and I started Lost Girls. So this is like shaping up to be a really awesome February, and I'm really excited about that. So 
I'm gonna let you guys go here. Let me know down below, as always, do you have any plans going on for the weekend? What are you reading? Something good happened to you this week? All that good stuff, leave that down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't subscribed already, please do and hit the bell so you don't miss future notifications. I do upload most Mondays and Thursdays, and I will talk to you guys all next time. Thanks so much for watching.